that's a really good fit of what you do. This is uh, John Fox uh, with another episode of the Design Build Ascend Studios, and I welcome welcoming a guest of mine that we actually kind of met in a very interesting way. And you guys hear him on every podcast so far because he does our intro and our outro, and it's called Digital Money. It's not crypto money. It's internet money. Internet money. That's it. Internet money. And uh, yeah. we, we love it. We love the music. And I'm just a huge fan. And I think it was really interesting how we met. So I'll, I'll tell you how we met first. And then, um, but welcome to the show, Austin Gray. And, uh, and just so you know, his last name is Austin Gray with an A. So if you're looking for him, oh, um, lots of people tend to, um, uh, if you're looking for people uh, with the last name Gray, I think that tends to be a, a sticky point. So uh, welcome to the show. That's a pet peeve of mine. So I'm really glad that you said it and I didn't have to because people, whenever I see somebody misspell my last name, it demonstrates a lack of care. So I appreciate <laughs> the, the caring nature. But, well, I, when I get uh, on the phone with somebody and they go, your last name is Fox. And, I, and they go, yes. And they go, how do you spell that? And I'm like, <laughs> with one X, you know, that's really the only way right, to spell right. O-X-X or F-O-X. Um, yeah. I say the, the red animal with the pointy ears. That's usually how I, but so. Um, but yeah, we met because uh, two Christmases ago, my family uh, wanted to break out of the COVID sort of world and we wanted to go to some place and go skiing and so we went to utah and um my my both my kids are in music they're both in they both play jazz they're she's my daughter who's graduating high school is a first chair uh tenor saxer tenor saxophone person and my son is a first chair trumpet and oh they, wow we were just itching for live music and we went to um the mountains over there and and you were in, in the, they were advertising you at the, at the, at the, at the, what do you call it? The base, you know, at the base of the uh, mountain. Right. Uh, what was the name of that bar? I forget what it was called. That's the last chair saloon in Brianhead. Right. In Brianhead. And, and yep. so we, we, we went down there and we got the tar- table right in front of you. And, and we were the, I mean, I was, I found you on Twitter probably by the second song and friended you and, and so it's been ever since we're now talking about NFTs. We got you on, you know, we're using your music on our on on our on our podcast. It's just, it's been a it's been a really interesting relationship. So, yeah. Well, I can't believe you're using that song, which I'm I'm actually I'm grateful you're using it. Uh, I really like that. It makes me feel good that it's getting some kind of use. You know, it's not going to languish I, in the Spotify database somewhere. It's not even on your website. So, I mean, are you selling it yet, or what are you doing? Yeah, so I recorded that with a guy in town here named John Houston. Uh, he John is a I, he's a wizard as far as I'm concerned. In the studio, he's a he's a uh, accomplished uh, piano player, uh, organ player. He's created his own instrument called the the Houston Rocket. It's on Wikipedia if you're interested to check it out. It's pretty neat. It's a hybrid uh, electric uh, keyboard kind of thing. But he he's doing all the uh, the keys on it. He did the bass guitar. And he did the he actually did the drums and he did the drums in two takes. And it was kind of an afterthought. It was going to be me or him doing the drums. And I I'm terrible at drums, so I re- I said you do it. And he said okay. And he just knocked it out. And uh, that's the one piece of the song that I'm unhappy with. And it's not for his lack of talent or skill, but. You know, we didn't really put much uh, energy into the drums, and it's it's too little apparent to me now that it needs to be re-recorded. So, I'm in the process of, of sourcing a studio for that, and, a, and a, the, the player, I think my neighbor, the drummer, he's he's going to do the uh, the drum part. So Got that's it. where we're at with that. So that's why you haven't kind of released it yet. Okay, that's exactly why. Yeah. Well, I'll take the new one and we'll we'll overlay the old one if you like, um, just so that we get the latest and greatest. And one of the things we talked about was. Um, NFTs in that in that realm. Are you, have you sorted out an NFT setup set up for uh, music yet? Because I know that you own Tezards, you own Dick Butts. By the way, I bought one of yours. Well, well hold on, hold on, hold on a second. I don't own Dick Butts. I own Dicker Butts, which is a derivative Dicker. crypto Dick Butts Tezards combo uh, created by this really phenomenal uh, <laughs> okay. meme artist. But uh, yeah, <laughs> anyway, go on. 
No, no, I was, I was just going to say, I think one of them, uh, the one that you bought was just sold and the guy sold it for 3000 Tez or something. No, I'm just teasing. It was, it wasn't that high. I was just, I sold uh, one. I sold one of them. I have a lot of them. Well, you know, relatively speaking, there's about a hundred or so in the collection and I owned six and now I own five. Uh, it's just a really niche little collection though. So how'd you find that one, by the way? I mean, how, how does that, how, why was that one interesting to you? Yeah. So I got into, I got into crypto in general and NFTs just as a, uh, I'm a tech person. I, I do my job title is DevOps engineer. Uh, and I, I really need to understand these things. And that was kind of my, my motivation into getting into NFTs, just evaluating the ecosystem, the crypto, the crypto ecosystem, so I could speak to it and not sound like a, you know, not be totally clueless. Uh, and then I got sucked in and the first project I got sucked into was on Tezos, uh, the Tezos blockchain. And it was called Tezards. And it was the first, um, it was the first PFP collection. If, I don't know if your listeners are familiar with PFP collections, but basically it's those profile pictures, they have rarity scores. And so there's, um, you know, there's essentially rarity ranks on, on every item in the collection, as I'm sure you're familiar with. Right. And, uh, but it was the first PFP collection on the Tezos blockchain with its own contract, its own FA2 contract. That's the token standard. And uh, it kind of blew up and I got really into Tezards. It was my first exposure and it just kind of, I have an affinity for Tezards now. And, uh, and there was a tribute that came out. Uh, I, was, I was watching uh, the website, the marketplace on object.com. That's a Tezos marketplace. Yep. And I saw there was an auction going for a tribute piece to Tezards. And it was this, this very cool looking uh, uh, hand-drawn, uh, it, was, it was called uh, Tezard Enriched with Death. Uh, enriched by this okay. enriched with death and uh that's kind of uh, a signature of the artist who created it the name of the artist is dark farms and uh they they uh they do this enriched with series and so this was an enriched with death and the tethered was a skull of the tethered so you know it was it was a dead tether essentially but uh, it was just really cool and i and so i i bid on it and I, I started bidding and the bidding started getting out of control, you know, for my, I wasn't spending a bunch of money on NFTs. I'm, I'm still, you know, relatively speaking, I'm, you know, that we won't get into how much money we're talking here, but it was, <laughs> no, that's never it was getting out of control. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was getting out of control though. So I backed out of the bidding and, and that was it for a while. And then I saw this collection a couple months later called Dicker Butts on on the object uh, website and it was trending in the hot collection section. And so I checked it out. I love Tezzards. I, I want to see this derivative project. I check it out. I think dick butts are cool. You know, some people may think they're a little ridiculous, but it's, yeah, I, it's all ridiculous. Yeah. It just seems, you know, it's like whatever is interesting to you, you know, and right. it, everybody has these different things. I bought an NFT that's you know, it's, it's a rendering, but it's got a cloud, a dark cloud in the middle, and then just a desert underneath it. And, you know, it's, I, I forget what the name of it is. And, and it's got a nice collection and, you know, it's, but it's just really interesting. These things sort of people respond to different kinds of things. So. Yeah. Do you, uh, yeah. Let me, I'll just finish that thought on that. Those are the, the dicker butts. I, I clicked into that and I, I saw the, I was like, these are pretty, they're pretty cool. They're these, they're very mean oriented. And uh, what they do is they take um, tezards, they take dick butts, and then they com combine them into these dicker butts. And sometimes the artist also includes like a third uh, item. So there's um, all sorts of different um, NFT collections that are brought in as like a third component. So you get these hybrid dicker butts mm -hmm. that may have like a, a C ham or may have an MF or as they as the third component to it and so it's just a really cool derivative project and sure enough the artist was that same person who did that tethered and rich with death and when i saw that i really liked that piece but the bidding got out of control and so i saw this as an opportunity to collect some of their art at a reasonable price and i did i bought five i bought six of them i won one in a raffle and uh but basically, right after, like a couple of days after I bought it, they, they, you know, 
five X as far as the floor price goes. And so I was a, a pretty lucky uh, snag on those, but that's not typical for my collecting experience. I'll say right. that. And when you do, I mean, are you, are you spending time on object just randomly looking to see what pop projects popped up? How do you do that? How do you sort of get in on the ground floor of that kind of stuff? Yeah. I'd say the number one way is Twitter. Um, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't go on the object website and scour for art. Uh, because number one, you don't know who the artist is, how it was sourced. Mm. Uh, and so it, to me, knowing the artist and, and seeing them produce the work and especially uh, having exposure to them on Twitter and seeing them produce that content in real time, you know, seeing them, you know, do a drop and then being able to go collect as quick as I can if I'm into the artist is part of the fun. And so if I don't know the artist, I'm typically not going to just you know, it, there's a, a valid approach to that, but I don't spend my time doing that. And what about which platforms? You, I know you like Tezos. Um, or do you do you use any of the other ones? Um, I know Ethereum's awfully expensive to buy nowadays, just with the gas fees. But right, uh, there there are some good projects on Ethereum. So oh yeah. Uh, but which ones do you like? Do you like uh, just the working off of the Tezos, or do you have you tried any of the other ones? Yeah, there's a Tezos artist who initially got me into, um, it, it brought the, the awareness of Tezos. To, uh, it gave me that awareness. And it was this artist named John Carroll. Uh, and he's, he does these Windows series on, on Tezos. Um, but uh, there, there's a couple of collectors, a couple of artists on, on Tezos that I, that I gravitate towards, John being one of them. He's got a big PFP collection called uh, Randomly Common Skellies, which I own a ton of those. Uh, uh, Tezzards and Dicker Bus. Those are my three primary um, focuses on Tezos. But I, I have branched into Ethereum a little bit. It is uh, cost prohibitive. You know, the gas fees can be ridiculous, as you know. Yeah. But yeah, the first collection I did get into on Ethereum was by that same artist uh, dark farms and it's called oh, derage so they're doing different he's running uh plat he's running different kind of platforms so that's interesting so he's, yeah. he's on different platforms this may be different versions of the product but so he's using more than one that's interesting yeah he's actually using it i'm not sure how the uh, how the technicals of it work i need to do more research but the, the artist publishes on a bitcoin based chain quite frequently um, XCP, if you're familiar with that. No. I'll yeah, it's CP. Okay. Yeah, it's, yeah, XCP. Uh, it's um, I have not collected any of their work on there, but they are the, the artist is is fairly prolific across uh, several chains, and they're followed by they're collected by several big artists or several big collectors. Um, uh, like Cosimo Medici, if you've ever heard that name, I know that mm. they're. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know that one. Big Twitter personalities who, you know, obviously have a lot of money behind them. It's, it's speculated they may be backed by like some talent agency or some nonsense like that. But so, how does that? I mean, uh, one of the questions I was you, you said something earlier about your education. You, you're a technical guy, and then you're also a you're you're also a very talented musician. Um, you write music. You play in all kinds of music. What you, I mean. First of all, where'd you go to school? Tell me a little bit about your early time as 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 junior Austin. So. Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, well, I've always been a computer nerd. I love computers. I love, and I've always been a gamer, or I was when I was younger. In computer games, I used to play. Uh, uh, familiar with BBS systems? Remember those? BBS. Yeah, bulletin board systems. Oh yeah, the, yeah yeah bulletin boards. Yeah yeah yeah. Back in the 90s, they were pretty popular, pre, you know, big internet. So did you write, write software for that or what did you do with that? I just played the games. I just played the games and, and those types of games inspired me to get into uh, computer programming. Got it. And I was a hobbyist for many years. And then eventually, um, I, I've just, I'm self-taught uh, in computers and uh, I've built a, a, a nice career just because I'm passionate about it. And therefore I was able to maintain um, the drive that it requires to, to progress in that field. Yeah, my um, my daughter, who's a musician, she's recognizing that, you know, all musicians really have to have other things to help supplement their income because they're oh, yeah. 
they're always going to be doing. And so it, to her, she was like, yeah, I think I'm going to have to be teaching and things like that. And I think she's okay with that. But I, I think that was a revelation only in the recent, you know, couple of months. It's like, yeah, I mean, you're just, you're going to have to be doing other things. So be passionate about those kinds of things. So, and just feel free to dig, but, you know, don't let the, don't let your music, you know, don't let off on the gas in that, in that area. Um, I think she would love to be in a jazz band or things like that. So it's, you know, I don't know how hard that is. So we'll, I guess we'll find out. So Yeah, well, difficulty aside, you're definitely right that you're not going to make money, probably. You know, you can make some money, but it's, it's, it's hard to, to build an income off of just doing music, which I did do for two years, and it was very hard, and I would not do it again. So are you have any, do you have any dates coming up, or where are you playing, or...? Yeah, I play around town here locally. I'm in St. George, Utah. It's a little gem on the southwest corner of Utah. Uh, and I have uh, some local dates here. I try to play about once or twice a month. I'm very cyclical with my, um, with, with my efforts. Uh, so I'm not currently uh, driving in music right now. I'm driving actually with work right now. I'm, I'm hyper-obsessed. I get I'm very obsessive. So I'm obsessed with what I'm working on at work, which is... Um, Terraform automation for infrastructure as code. Um, okay, All right. Start right. Okay. You just used three big words in a row. Terraform. I know. Terraform. Uh, Terraform is the name of the application. Okay. And what it's what it's for is for managing your. Uh, if you're familiar with AWS, Amazon Web Services. Sure. It's for managing your infrastructure uh, as code, um, as opposed to logging into the UI or using the command line to. Okay, so for AWS, or are you is it another platform? It's for AWS. It could be okay. used for other platforms as well, but I'm I'm using it for AWS currently. Okay, and I, you, I'm obsessed with it. Have you heard of File, the Filecoin, and the Filecoin system? I believe I have, and I I think I've seen you posting about some some things. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Card Stack. Have you heard of uh, Oh you, Card? It, well, you there's keep posting about Card. One of them is the uh, is uh, the Filecoin. Filecoin is basically a decentralized system for filing for storing systems that can compete against uh, AWS at a fraction of the cost. So if you log in, put some of your coin in, you can, I don't even think you have to do coin, but you basically pay um, the people that, that service that, that, that file cert, that file service through Filecoin. But um, you know, it's it's basically a decentralized version of AWS, which is a monster. I mean, AWS is just a monster. I need to look at that because I'm I'm again I'm really curious at how these things work, and so that I, I, I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around. I mean, I've heard of that too, using the blockchain and using like compute resources via the blockchain, but I can't imagine an implementation that's. I don't know. I got to look at that. I think you should because this is that's a good marriage of your two things that you already do. But I really want you to I really want you to look up card stack and dig okay. into that. I would love your opinion on what you think that's doing because their goal is to is to um, build it's an open source so everyone can build on their platform. But the idea is to build um, cards that people in the in various industries, so any industry in the world can start to pull in and stack their own, you know, uh, inter integration. Uh, iteration, iteration of, um, you know, various services that you might expect uh, from maybe AWS or, um, you know, uh, DeFi or, you know, rewards coins and all these things. So it's really a, a way to, to create an interface to make it easier because you're a techie, right? I, I'm, a, I'm a techie as well. Um, you know, we're mavens in that, in that sense, right? We're, we, we're pushing the envelope. And when people go, hey, have you used one inch yet? And they're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what, right. You know, you know, I mean, you know, what about the, the uh, you know, the unicorn? You know, did you use the Uniswap yet? And they're like, I don't even know what you're talking about. And, yeah. you know, you know we, we do, I use DeFi, DA, DAOs, and, um, you know, all these other things. And so, you know, it's not very user friendly, right? You have to, and I'm not even a programmer. And, and I, I still have a whole part of that that I'm, I'm missing, but I did a podcast and I asked a bunch of questions and it was really a webinar. And so I, at the beginning, I wanted to know what my audience were was. So right. I listed seven things 
And the last one was uh, programming. Has anybody done any programming on the blockchain? All of the other ones above it were things that I've done. And so only one person out of the hundred that were signed up hit programming. There was maybe 20 or 30, you know, filled on the other ones. I would say 75% of the people said the last one, which was, I don't know anything about blockchain. I'm just here because I think it's interesting and I'm a newbie, right? So, and that yeah. was really, that was really an eye opener for me because no one really, they, they know about, you know, Bitcoin and they hear about Ethereum and they assume there's probably 20 coins. They don't realize there's thousands, 10,000, 100,000 projects going on right now. Right. It's, it's insane. It's yeah. insane. Yeah. But I, I, I feel it. You would I would encourage card stack. I would encourage you to look at it and Filecoin. I'm definitely. I know I've heard of Filecoin, and I know I've seen you post about card stack. So I'm going to check that out. Uh, I just, you know, I just want to say on that on that point you just made about how wide the ecosystem is. Uh, I did a. I quickly became like the, the the NFT nerd at my work, and and I work at a local tech company here, and so through that I was asked to do a an NFT talk or, or a crypto talk uh, for a a group of local high school teachers at a teacher's convention. Uh, and I expected to go there and educate them on like the concerns and the dangers around their kids, the, their students, you know, using these things. And, and really what it turned out, you know, most of them just wanted to know what they should buy, you know, like, what should I buy? I'm like, no, don't buy it. Don't listen to me on this stuff. <laughs> it's pretty hilarious. It's a, uh, it's kind of a mania, right? It is. And I, you know, I, I recognize it as this is sort of the, the beginning of something, right? I don't view the art and the memes and the, you know, the, the cartoonish art that we see as the future of NFTs. I mean, that's going to be, that's going to be the legacy of, do you, can you imagine owning a tether now, you know, 20 years from now? It's, NFTs is everything that you can think of. It's your driver's license. It's your healthcare. It's your um, it's your car insurance policy. It's your mortgage policy. It's, you know, it's the way you pay your, 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 um, your mortgage tax on your house. It's the way you prove that you own your car. You know, it's, it's everything you can think of will be on the blockchain where you want to make sure you want to prove that you own it and, yep. and, and you want to be able to sell it in a, in a matter of, you know, a global economy because right. I mean, the truth is, is that, I mean, I, I think I, I could run for mayor for my town, Seal Beach. I could run for mayor. Um, I have friends of ours that, you know, encourage me and I would love to be able to go. My platform is I want to help everybody get a, a wallet in my, in my town, my Seal Beach. And I want to donate, you know, we're going to, we're going to put in a hundred dollars in everybody's account, but we're also going to focus on converting all of our mortgages in our neighborhood to, you know, NFT based, you know, we're going to create a DAO where everyone gets to vote, you know, just really kind of push it so that when you're done, you, you know, you know, after your term or whatever, people have learned something, you know, it's, you've just pushed it along because the future is going to be there. You can't keep on staffing the way we staff our, our cities and our governments and expect to be, you know, any, you know, mainstreaming. Uh, you have, I mean, they talk about the IRS. I talked to my accountant uh, last week. Sheesh, don't say that word. Oh, listen <laughs> yeah. to this. No, no, I'm good. Yeah. He said 40% of all of their equipment is, is un non-functional. Like, so they're, they're, they're fax machines, they're copy machines, the equipment that equipment they operate, 40% of it is, is d dysfunctional. So they're just not updating. They don't, they're, they're behind. So that's they're why they're shaking up. That's why they're shaking me down because they want <laughs> they well, need to upgrade their equipment. No, I'm totally kidding. And they're 18 months behind just doing everything they're they're supposed to be doing. So yeah, but yeah, it, it needs to be revamped and and it'll be it'll be an interesting world that we live in in the next 20 years. Oh yeah, I'm still here. I'm just grabbing a coffee real quick, but I just want to nope. say on that on that point, you know that um, you're talking about getting your town to. to to adopt the, uh, some kind of wallet and system and, and convert some mortgages. And my whole stance on that is, and I love that idea, but my feeling is that the, we're not ready yet. I, I mean, it's, it's not fair to thrust this technology on people, on, you know, on little old grandmas, if you will, uh, 
because it's just too convoluted, it's too complex, and it's too easy to screw up right now. Because you know, you lose your seed phrase, and you 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 your wallet gets destroyed or whatever, and you've lost your asset for for good. You can't recover that. Uh, there is there's challenges that need to be worked out. But on the other hand, there's people who are looking at the current state of things like I just described, and they're seeing this as the end of the game versus the beginning of the game. They're like, look, it's not, this is never going to work, things like that. So I'm a big believer that it is going to work. But like you said, another decade from now, I think that it's going to be, the landscape's going to be insane. Obviously, it's going to be insanely different, and it's going to be fun to see how, how it looks. And maybe, and maybe it's just having the conversation so that people go, oh, my mortgage is going to be on an NFT. I should probably learn about it. And, you know, and that slowly takes another decade before it actually happens. But the reality is, is that you could push people by, by the, through the incentive program like they did down in, in El Salvador. You know, hey, we're going to give everybody $100. Just log in, create an app, you know, or create, uh, create an account and we'll send you the money and, you know, in Bitcoin. So uh, to me, those are the kind of incentives that really need to happen. And, yeah. you know, built you, so Seal Beach, for example, could have an app, right? And so it could have an app where you, you look, it could be built on the blockchain and, and, you know, you could start, you know, maybe baby steps that, enter, you know, people have to log in right now to pay their electric or their, uh, their gas water or their water trash bill, right? So sure. Yeah, right. That all of those things could ultimately be on the blockchain and, and, you know, and they still have an account where they could, it's a situation, but you were not going to lose anything if you, you know, if, if it's, if it's secured in the, in the way that it currently is, you know? Right. So, yeah. I, I love that like, idea. I mean, I would, I would love to have a, my, for my local, you know, St. George government to have a contract address where I could send my, you know, my water bill, you know, my utility bill to just send them, you know, X number of whatever crypto. Uh, that'd be amazing. Yeah. And you could, it could all be on the blockchain. You could see your balance, you know, all these things. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's, you know, obviously there's security issues. There's also some, um, you know, privacy issues, but all of those things can be right. sorted out in the app. Right. So, I mean, you can, you, you can, you can maintain the same level of, of public information that's available today, but just hard to call. You have to, you know, get on the line, you know, go to, or go down to your city hall and go, I'd like to get, you know, a copy of the, the reports for, you know, this address and, you know, and, or, or even find out about your, um, how about this? How about finding out if your contractor is um, registered in your town to do work? Like if you, when oh, you yeah. buy contractors, when you, when you hire a contractor, they have to be, they actually have to be certified in your town to work. So you right. can call in, hey, let me see his driver, let me see his license, right? You know, it's on the blockchain. Just, you know, use this QR code and it'll show up. So, <laughs> yeah, here's the token. Yeah, here's the token address. It's this token right here. Yeah. Exactly. I, I think it, we're going to have that soon. I think the, the way forward, though, is going to be some form of it's going to be, I can't see a way around it. It's going to have to have hybrid, you know, Web 2 esque backends that, you know, they'll have a customer, customer portal. And I'm sure you're in agreement here, but customer portal and all that, as far as anonymity goes, all that's generated and managed in that backend and then be a smart contract integrated with the chain yeah you get that's it card stack. that's card stack oh okay i'll have to look at that yeah yeah but it's the uh it, we just got to figure out the custodial situation and also like insurance against some kind of um, issue but if it, it's so possible it, it's so so possible so tell me about your programming skills because you were you mentioned a couple of times even on twitter that you were writing stuff i mean you actually actually created some nfts as well but where are where are you at with programming? I've been programming um, professionally since two thousand and eight. Two thousand eight, yeah, that's right. I, I got my start around that time professionally, but I've always been a hobbyist. Uh, I've always wanted to get get into uh, game programming, like I mentioned earlier, and then I it segued into web development, uh, and then I I since went on to do like. Um, DevOps, which is really just infrastructure management, or at least that's the side of it that I work on. Uh, and so, uh, I mean, that's really the, the long short of my programming. I, I like to think that I'm good. 
I've been, I've done, I've worn many hats throughout the years. So, I mean, I've done um, front end and back end and been infrastructure and automation. And I like to think that I can do anything, uh, which is what kind of compelled me to get it. I like Tezos because it, it was the transaction fees are a fraction of a, of a penny. And so I was able to go in there, you know, I, I first looked at Ethereum and they have the web three library, web three.js. Um, but I like looking at web three as not unique to it. It's not Ethereum. It's, it's every integration that allows you to take a wallet and connect to a, a, a website and interface with a smart contract. That's web three for me. And using your phone as your authentication, your wallet as your, your auth. And, um, and so I, I got into Tezos and I actually made a website called Tezos Moon, T-E-Z-O-S-M-O-O-N.com. Uh, it's not really functional. I mean, it's functional, but it's, it's using, a, as for, a, 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 it interfaces with the blockchain um, via a GraphQL API that I can't uh, verify if it's still functional or not, but it's, it, that's, I essentially just had to learn how all that stuff worked, how Web3 worked, um, what it took to create a website that allows you to log in with your phone or log in with your browser, uh, your wallet. And so I have not done any smart contract development yet, but I've begun looking at it and it's different for each blockchain. They all have their own um, languages, but the, the standards are evolving and, and becoming cross-chain compatible and things like that. It's amazing the pace at which things go and just how many people are doing their own thing. And then, you know. It's blow everything's blowing up. Right? What about um, DAOs, DAOs? Are you, um, are you interested in those at all yet? I am, uh, and back to you, you mentioned that as I, having like a community DAO, it's again, it's not ready for mass adoption yet, but it will be. And I've been part of one DAO, a pretty active, and it was the Dicker Butts DAO. Uh, the oh. creator, yeah, they just created a, a DAO. There's this website, Tezos home base, where you can go and it's a UI to, to create and manage a DAO. Uh, and then you can then deposit your tokens and you can deposit NFTs and you can have uh, votes and there's voting periods and all that fun stuff. Uh, and it's going to be, it's just amazing that it's, it's there already for any person to go in there using their web UI to create your own DAO and, and within minutes you're ready to go. And it's just going to be amazing to see how they iterate and how much easier it gets because, you know, that it's going to be critical for adoption. Have you heard, have you heard of the, uh, 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 the one that's called cult DAO or the cult C A U L T dot I O maybe it's C uh, cult cult DAO dot dot I O. Uh -huh. sure get it right. So that one is really interesting because um, let me just pull it up here. It, it's it's the acronym uh, D um, C U L T or cult. Yeah. Uh, the oh, it's cult D cult DAO cult. DAO .io. and it, the whole thing is uh, automated. So what you do is you can you can upload a project that you're working on with the white paper. It's on the blockchain. It's listed as a, a as a thing that you can vote on. And if you own Cult, you can vote. And then if there if there's a there's a window for voting. If it's it's approved, it automatically gets funded. That, that project automatically gets funded with whatever percentages and, and all these things. And then people get, uh, they start burning uh, cult coins and, and, and rewarding cult coins. Uh, all, all that's done automatically. So you have to vote, but um, it's an interesting process. It's, and it, it's on the Ethereum network. It's an you know, EC20 coin, but um, I, I just love the whole idea of, of it all being you know, autonomous, you know, it just, you know, you think about at the end of the year where everyone's going, you know, forget, you know, I've got USAA for insurance. At the end of the day, at the end of the year, the way it works is if you didn't use your insurance, like you didn't get in a car accident or whatever, the USAA program automatically sends you a written check. Um, and that, and uh, based on your, you know, your, I don't know what you call it, your rewards of being a good driver, right? Yeah. And so, you know, these, these autonomous systems can be done where you just, you know, your insurance system is built on the blockchain. If you don't have any, if you never use it, you're getting, a, you're a good driver and you've got good grades and it could be even attached to your, your uh, transcripts at school and, 
And so all these things are automatic and boom, you just get a you you get some reward coins in your in your wallet. I think that's where it's all gonna be. And uh, so DAOs are, I think, our future of, of what we're talking about when we talk about uh, blockchain, because so many transactions have to happen. And as more people become more transactional, uh, we have billions of people in the third world that are don't even have phones and don't, you know, don't, they don't have it, you know, enough electricity. They're working, they're living off of, you know, dollar 50 a day. Um, once those people become, you know, integrated into the internet and, you know, they all need to get paid as well. And so, you know, you can't, yeah. can't have, and, and, and again, people are going to start working remotely. You know, they're going to, you know, I'm hiring people from, you know, um, all over the middle East to do drafting and, and doing, you know, design work and engineering um, and all these things. So um, I'd like to, I, and I pay them, I have to pay them with US dollars, but, you know, I have to prove it and all those things. All those things could be done. I, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a bright new world for, in that regard, so. It's definitely revolutionizing communities uh, all over the world. There's these artists on, uh, on te- I don't mean to keep jumping to Tesla's, but this is the, the community, of the, the network I'm familiar with Absolutely. the most. But there's this uh, there was this marketplace called Hick at Nunk, um, and it's just recently got renamed. I think it's pronounced Tia. Uh, there's a big drama over over that. Um, but anyway, uh, it, it's a lot of uh, it originated out of Brazil, and uh, there's a lot of Brazilian artists there. But there's also a lot of Indonesian artists that are popping up. I'm just art, you know, just people that you know. If you're trying to see art, typically you would never ever be exposed to these artists and, and then they're they're becoming big players in the scene and it's awesome to see uh, it's changing their lives no changing their life. absolutely absolutely it's it is it's like i said you you can there are people i mean I, I have a friend of our i have a friend of ours he runs a uh, internet well not internet he's it's a um uh integration company so he, he basically provides home automation systems so that you know he integrates the the television and the security system and all the pieces that that home needs to be as, as automated as possible. So he's an integrator. They're called integrators. Yeah. And um, he has a personal assistant who lives in the Philippines. She makes, I think, $15 an hour in the Philippines. She's literally one of the richest people in her neighborhood. Yeah. And and the way she operates is because he is in California and she's in the Philippines. She basically wakes up in the middle of the night and she's on the whole day oh, you know, during the California time frame. So she works on California time zone, basically. And, yeah. uh, and she's phenomenal. She's a phenomenal asset to his team. And uh, you're going to see that all over the world where, I mean, data centers are already doing it, but we're talking about individuals, personal, personal connections where you know, it's, they don't operate, you know, data centers, they operate off of, you know, a company in that area and that one company manages all these people. No, it's going to get more decentralized than that. I mean, that's yeah. pretty decentralized because we're now, you know, money is transferring across state lines and into different countries. So yeah. it's becoming decentralized, but I'm talking about even a micro, you know, it's, it's getting into the, into the macro level. So it's pretty interesting. I can only imagine that as, as time goes on, unless there's, you know, short of some massive government intervention, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be quite the normalizer as far as uh, um, economic uh, opportunities go. Uh, yeah. It's just going to be more, it's really the next step in the, in the, in the internet economy are these blockchains and the cryptocurrencies, and yeah. NFTs. And it's going to be amazing to see, it's going to change the world drastically it's just going to be wild to see how it's you know if you can predict how you're going to be a rich person but <laughs> well i have one other question we talked about and i know it's it's actually 50 almost an hour here so we should probably wrap oh wow up. okay i know That's time quick. flies when we get into these subjects because i can literally talk for another hour but i know you've got to go um, and nobody i know talks about these things so it's, it's nice to i appreciate you speaking with me and let's do it again because i you know when we get an update our uh, you know, when people listen to the end of the song, now that they're going to watch the show, they'll be able to listen to the outro and then, you know, and then I'll send a link to, uh, oh, they, I can't send a link yet because you don't Not have yet. it. 
So maybe the next one, when it's loaded, we'll do another one. But I wanted, to, I wanted to ask the question was the, um, you know, the NFTs, what you're seeing now, just sort of the evolution, there is definitely art associated with it, you, you know, vis visible art. And right. it's all kinds of different art, you know, and, and people finding things that are, you know, renderings that they're doing. And some of it, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, objects of people and things. And then there's scenery. Um, I can see it where there's memes, obviously, and, and then the future of just even photography is basically done this way. But um, I'm, I'm fascinated with the marriage, the marriage of two different kinds of art forms in the NFT, such as music and, um, you know, paint or art or what, you know, visible art. Where are you at? Or have you done any of that? Or have you, have you, have you contemplated tackling a project like that? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what I've seen so far. Uh, I, I've seen a number of NFTs that have come out um, that are interactive. Um, like that website, that smart contract, um, Hicket Nunk, that, that marketplace, they uh, offer interactive, uh, you can do embeddable code. Um, there's also, uh, there's just, there's, they're offering ways to do embeddable code um, within your NFT. And so you can essentially, you know, do mouse over or you can just set up a, you can integrate music or interactive music. Uh, you, you could go so much as, you know, publish an entire game on, on there. But for, for the music, I've seen some interesting things like um, you're familiar with the band uh, Lincoln Park, right? Oh so yeah. Mike, Shin Mike Shinoda, he, he's into NFTs. He's the, uh, you know, the rapper from Lincoln Park. Uh, well, how old he, is he? Got to be in his fifties. I don't even know. You know what? Yeah. I'm not. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but I know he's big in the. Uh, he's he's in the NFT right, scene. I don't want to make him look bad. I don't want to make him look bad. I don't want to get into the music or anything like that. But he, I, I you know, it's really cool to see somebody like that get into the scene. And he actually does, has been doing some releases uh, on the Tezos blockchain, uh, and he's been doing you know, his own art with music in the background. Or he did a, a, a PFP collection of, uh, I can't remember how many, 5,000 maybe, um, uh, 5,000 item PFP collection uh, as he, and, and simultaneously with a, an album release. And each PFP would do like a different iteration or a different version of, of the song. Uh, and so that's just an interesting way to approach it. But as far as like a killer use case, um, younger than that, I could. What's that? I, I was just taking. I wanted to make sure I didn't say he was fifty years old and he wasn't. Uh, I <laughs> felt bad. Clear here. Right. Uh, he is. He's forty-five. Okay, so he's forty-five. All right. Yeah, you could round up. That's not bad. You were. You you nailed it. But I I think the the. The biggest thing is gonna is gonna wind back to ownership. So as far as like rights to a song, you know, if you want to sell oh. your rights to a song, NFTs, why not? You know, no, I think it's I think having um, what what blockchain does is creates a new way for people to interact with what I would call gatekeepers, right? And and yeah. you, know, you know, when you have a gatekeeper such as Tower Records or Columbia Records, that is a huge gatekeeper. And they benefit from having that skill of being able to promote and to provide services that benefit an artist. But they take such a large portion of that that the individual artists that don't like that process um, are basically shunned out of, the, out of that community. And they're actually, you know, the, 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 the systems that actually push um, mainstream musicians yeah. uh, are they really create that wedge and everyone else that may be talented are kind of found on the edges, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and um, it's really hard to find talent, you know, and I think, um, you know, you get these amazing people on Twitter who have, you know, big followings and they can create music and, and just post it on their, you know, 200,000 followers. And, and all of a sudden they're, you know, they make money just because they, you know, they can sell their music that way. Um, yeah. I think it's huge. And so, and that's why I really want to, I really want to see your internet money um, that way so that I can, you know, be part of that process. Cause I feel like that's the future. And so when it becomes an NFT, I want to make sure that, you know, 
it, maybe there's, I don't even know how you would sell it. Maybe you, could, you sell it as parts of that music and of that song so that we can, we can own it as an NFT and I can celebrate that on our website. We can, you know, talk about it again, because I know you're, we're going to, we'll, we'll do the launch, but you're going to have to, you know, keep on doing whatever you're doing. And if hopefully it, it does become an NFTs, then we can support that and uh, be part of that process. Cause I'm, I'm a fan. So. Yeah. Well, thanks dude. And I've been thinking about that. There's a number of ways to approach it. And I've thought about you know, releasing track individual tracks and, and seeing if I can get some collaborators who then go on to release their own remix of the, of the song as their own NFTs. And, and we can just split, you know, split profits or just, you know, you know, relinquish the rights and let anybody who creates it, their own derivatives maintain, you know, mm. I'm thinking about it. So I'll let you know when I figure it out. Oh, cool. I mean, I'm nobody, but it would be fun to be able to just to make that part of what we do. And, and again, I, I get to listen to your song, Internet Money, every time I edit this, edit the video that we do. And, and we've done, um, I've done 13 recordings now. And so, you know, it's it's on that on, on our website it's or on our uh, YouTube channel it's it's every single um, every single posting so it's pretty cool I love it and I'm, I love that you're doing a podcast so one, the one I'm, let me ask you one question sure. do you have any um, do you have any guests coming up that you're particularly excited about um, like what if you could name one guest coming up who are you most excited about and why well, well, you know, I, I, I will tell you what I just did. I just, um, cause I don't, uh, right now I don't actually, you're actually my last one as far as I programmed okay. because April was going to be really hard for me. Um, yeah. it's a big month for birthdays. I've got five of them. I'm going to be traveling to Chicago. Oh. So I, I've got a lot of things that I've, uh,